GPT 4.0 just dropped. It's the new model. It's fresh. It's hot. It's sick. It's faster. It's cheaper. You can talk to it. Can talk to you. It's bananas. Let's get into the video. And look, by the way, if you want to win during this AI revolution, if you're into AI tech, the future of business, this is the time you hit subscribe. All right, let's watch the video. The first example we have here is creating a video game just using GPT-4. And as, as a gamer, I love this. So what we're doing here is we're taking a quick screenshot. We're uploading the screenshot to ChatGPT. And he says, please, can you code this in Python? Boom. Boom. This is sped up a little bit, but it's, it's writing all this code instantly. Saves the file, hits play, and the, the, the dude's playing the game in like two minutes. This is crazy. This is crazy. Now, listen, to create sophisticated, awesome games, it's going to take a little bit more than this. But I don't know about you. I was trying to learn coding years ago, and it was really freaking hard. It was boring. I didn't enjoy it. Like, the idea that I can come home and just take a picture of, like, Frodo from The Lord of the Rings and say, make a game about this, that's coming. That is coming. So crazy coding just based on an image. All right, let's look at another example. So the next example here is going to revolutionize teaching. By the way, literacy rates in the United States are super low. It is not a good situation. There's like a dramatically large amount of people that can't read. So anyway, that's that's a problem. My wife's a teacher. I know tutors. And I think using ChatGPT as a supplement to the educational system is going to be powerful. Let's take a look. OpenAI invited myself and my son Imran here uh, to try out some of their new technology. And so we're curious about how good it might be at tutoring someone in math on Khan Academy. So let's get it started. Okay, let's see what you got. It's loading up. All right, make sure I can see our screen. So it's just on an Actually, iPad. Actually, in, in this form, Hello there. I can't... I'm here with my son, and I'd love you to tutor him on this math problem, but don't give him the answer. You can ask questions and nudge him in the right direction, but I really want to make sure he understands it himself. And he's here in the room, so you can talk to him directly. Okay, so again, this is pretty cool, the multimodal feature. You can talk to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will understand the words you're saying and speak back to you, which we're going to see here. And I also find this really relevant because as parents, I'm a father, i got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. As a parent... We are responsible for our children's education. You can't just drop your kid off at school and say, good luck. We have to supplement. We are part of it. The problem is, as they get older, the, the work starts to get pretty tough. Like, I was in calculus. I was taking college-level calculus courses my junior year. I can't do that stuff anymore. It's really complicated. So having a tool like this is going to be really powerful. Okay, so let's see what ChatGPT says back. Of course. I'd be happy to help. Let's look at the problem together. Can you first identify which sides of the triangle are the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse relative to angle alpha? I could definitely not answer this. So I'm glad that we have ChatGPT, a.k.a. Scarlett Johansson, uh, here to ask the questions. So let's see what this young man says. All right. So I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Fact. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, Remember really, I'm, the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think, I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC? You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle alpha. It's kind of interesting, like, the empathy that this AI chatbot implements it's actually empathetic it's like you're close but that's a little bit different let's go a little bit deeper the hist you know that's an interesting you know this is also probably interesting because you if you know the way that your child learns you can actually prompt the ai to speak to the child in a way that they'll perform with better with right do they prefer empathy do they want directness so i think that's an interesting way because again you can prompt and change things maybe you uh, don't want to speak to a woman, but you'd rather speak to a man for whatever reason. You, you know, you can actually adjust all sorts of things like voice. So I think that's just the possibilities are endless. Let's keep going. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and is directly opposite the right angle. Can you find which one is the hypotenuse? Oh, okay. I see. So um, I think the hypotenuse is this really long side from A to B. Would that be correct? 
Exactly. Well done. Now that you've identified the hypotenuse, can you identify which side is the opposite side to angle alpha? Okay, well, I mean, you told me earlier that this was the adjacent. This is crazy. So you get the idea here. This AI tutor is going to be an incredible supplement because, again, the way that we educate kids now, it doesn't work. Kids are not getting educated. They're getting pushed up through the system. Um, and it's, I mean, there's a number of issues there. Um, but having AI there to supplement learning is going to be a game changer. Let's look at another example. AI is going to have a tremendous impact in helping and assisting people with disabilities, for example, in this case, the blind, due to its multimodal ability to interpret video in real time, it's, let's watch how it can help this blind man better interact with his environment in a couple different ways. Try and tell me exactly what they're doing right now, please. Um, right now, the ducks are gently gliding across the water. They're moving in a fairly relaxed manner, not in a hurry. Occasionally, one of them will dip its head under the water, probably looking for food, and then pop back up. I even know when it's... So that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that it can actually interpret what these ducks are doing. And it just speaks, like, what's really fascinating to me is the way that the AI speaks. It does not sound like a robot. For all you business-minded folk out there like myself, I'm thinking about how can I leverage this to give my customers a better experience? How can I use this to close more prospects and move them through the marketing and sales workflow? Um, it's just so powerful. It's so powerful. All right, let's, let's, this next example is going to blow your mind. Taxi is coming with its orange light on. I think I'll hail it to get home. Yes, I spotted one just now. It's heading your way on the left side of the road. Get ready to wave it down. Great job hailing that taxi. It looks like you're all set to go. That's a good dog right there, leading the way into the taxi. Safe travels. That is crazy. That is crazy saying, hey, OpenAI, I need you to help me hail a taxi. GPT-40, I need you to hail me a taxi. Holding up your phone, the phone tells you exactly, here comes the taxi, hail it now. That's crazy. The implications for assisting uh, the, the blind or it's just, just absolutely bananas. I, I cannot, this is like the new generation of humanity. Like how can you not be excited about this? How can you not be excited about this? It's crazy, it's crazy. Let's look at another example. So this example is going to be ChatGPT being a translator. My wife speaks Polish. My wife's mom speaks Polish. Um, my, my wife's father speaks Polish. I don't speak any Polish. So something like this could be useful. Let's watch. To Gaskar wants to know if GPT-40 is capable of real-time translation. Mark, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it? let's do it. Right. Yeah. I, I um, speak Italian, so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Let's try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Again, you, there's, it seems like, and this is going to explode. This is going to completely change the way that humans engage with robots. But there's like personality. There's personality. There's almost like sarcasm in a way. It's very interesting. Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni limiari. So to me, this is super, super cool. I've tried doing this with stuff like Google Translate. It did not work. Um, this seems really cool, really smooth. Maybe, again, even integrated into glasses technology so that you could hear. Um, I've seen, uh, I think it was Google that had a little device that you could, that they were kind of demoing that you could wear on your lapel. So translation, going to be sick, going to be dope. Technology is going to lead the way. So this is a really kind of funny example where this young man is going to be using ChatGPT 4.40 to act as like an interview consultant. And I think that's where this can be really, really powerful is using AI 
as an assistant, as a professional assistant, which again is why I think we need to be paying attention because AI is going to dramatically change the workforce in ways you cannot understand. We cannot even fathom what the world is going to look like in 10 years. So let's watch this example. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rocky. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm awesome. Listen, I got some huge news. Oh, do tell. I'm all ears. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? It's so crazy. It's so crazy. This, if you've watched the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix, this is, this is like almost like the exact same thing where you just feel like you're engaging. Like the way that it engages, I've never engaged with AI um, or the internet like this before. Just like the, the, it's got personality. It's got personality. And again, just as a quick, another quick side note, within five years, people are going to be trying to get married to these devices. Without a doubt, maybe even sooner, people are going to be trying to get married. This is so crazy to me. Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky, <laughs> you definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which <laughs> could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Well, your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. Though maybe not in the way you're hoping for an interview. Okay, I got it. I this just blows me away. The There's like inflection in the voice. There's pauses in a natural way. There's laughter. And this is going to, I mean, this changes everything we know about the way that humans engage with computers, with technology. And uh, maybe we could have an entire episode on the morality and the ethics and some of the, the concerns with that. But this is crazy. I love this. Let's look at another example. So here's an example of a meeting, maybe using OpenAI or AI to lead a meeting. Maybe you don't have a leader, or maybe you are the owner of a company, but you can't be at a particular meeting. This happens to me sometimes. We do weekly meetings at my marketing agency. I can't always be there, but maybe I could program AI with the topics that I wanted to cover and use my assistant to lead the meetings when I can't be there. Pretty interesting. Let's watch. Hi, I'm Lillian, and today I want to do a small debate about between cats and dog. Uh, which one do you like? Uh, I like dog because it's a great companion to humans. It's uh, cute, it's loyal, and you can play outside with the dog. Um, Props to Lillian, definitely dogs. And by the way, y'all, get a microphone. Like, it costs, like, a decent rig costs 100 bucks. You should get a microphone. You shouldn't be talking through your webcam. I'm sorry. It's 2024. Get a mic. How about you, Ola? Yeah, my name is Ola. I think cats are better because they're more affordable, they're more quiet, they're more independent, and they live longer. Interesting points. Sounds like we've got a classic dogs versus cats debate here. I can see the appeal of both. Dogs are super loyal and great companions. <laughs> But cats have their own charm with their independence and low-maintenance lifestyle. Who likes cats? It sounds like Ola is more of a cat person. And who likes dogs? Of you? Lillian mentioned she likes dogs. Anyone else? By the way, this is interesting too. One of the challenges that I've had in executing AI in my marketing agency is sometimes AI will have a difficult time attributing words and statements to the right person. So I like what Miana did here to say, hey, who likes cats? Who likes dogs? Um, and OpenAI, again, GPT-4.0, was able to very quickly and easily identify who said what. Here, Team Dog. I'm also Team Dog. I, uh, my name is Christine, and uh, I think dogs are just incredible with kids. Uh, we've got a, a huge German Shepherd, and he's great with little toddlers. He lets them play. Okay, right. Well, we all know dogs are better, so we don't need to have this debate here. But again, I can definitely see a future where maybe if, if again, as the owner of a business or of a classroom, like, like teachers, whatever, 
you maybe want to have someone moderate a discussion or make sure a discussion is headed in the right direction using some sort of AI uh, technology like what we've got here to lead the conversation and direct the conversation the right way could be a huge deal. Because I don't know about you, but meetings can a, either often be uh, a waste of time or B, get completely off track. So having someone there that or something to focus on getting things on the right track could help. It's also very difficult if, you, if you're moderating a meeting, if you say, hey, everyone has 30 seconds to say something, you kind of feel bad as the moderator of the meeting saying your 30 seconds are up next person. But if we could program the AI to be the moderator of that mess of that meeting, I think that could be a lot more comfortable. So interesting, interesting, interesting. So here Sam Altman is going to discuss the founder of OpenAI, CEO over there, I think still, I don't know, he, they're getting fired all over there all the time. But Sam Altman here is going to explain how he's using OpenAI. Pretty interesting. He had it for like a week or something. Um, but one surprising one is putting my phone on the table while I'm like really in the zone of working. And then without having to like change windows or change what I'm doing, using it as like another channel. So I'm like working on something. I would normally like stop what I'm doing, switch to another tab, Google something, click around or whatever. But while I'm like still doing it, to just ask and get like an instant response without changing from what I was looking at on my computer, that's been a surprisingly cool thing. Actually very cool. So one of the, I think things I've started to really appreciate as I grow my entrepreneurship journey, as I grow my marketing agency, is getting in the zone. It takes a while to get into a zone of work. So saying, hey, I'm going to sit down and work on a project for two hours, two and a half hours, is I, f I find to be very, very uh, powerful. But at the same time, you know, it's easy to either A, get distracted or need to, like Sam says, click around to different places. So this idea that I can have an assistant next to me on my desk and just ask it questions and ask it to do things is like incredibly, imagine saying like, you know, uh, a chat GPT, send an email to someone, chat GPT, go to the internet, find something in generating an HTML file and put it into my Google drive. Like that's where this stuff is going. That's where my head is thinking, you know, and, and, and that's the other thing. Sometimes ideas pop into my head and it's like, I just want to get it done right now. Hey, chat GPT. I forgot to book the flowers for my wife's birthday. Go ahead and, and order those and um, deliver them, please. Like, this is the stuff that is just going to take efficiency and in, in, in just explode it. So super, super cool ideas there, I think. Here's another cool example on Twitter, which, by the way, if you're on Twitter, you definitely want to follow Mark Savant. That's my channel. I'm just sharing all kinds of great stuff on, on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. But here's an interesting uh, use case from generative history scanning or just taking a picture of an image again multimodal voice image video that's where this that's what really i think makes gpt40 so impressive but just scanning an image taking a picture of an image and transcribing it into text like this is crazy to me and now you have a file that's easy to be adjusted and changed and moved Super, super cool. This guy jokes here. Finally, I can read my grandfather's diary. That's funny. Because, you know, again, the way that my grandparents write is hard to read. But if I can scan all these ideas in, I think that's a super cool use case. And here's a use case of how we can use GPT-40 as a customer service tool. Let's watch this example. Hey, yo, this is Joe. I'm going to connect you to Acme Telco now. The new iPhone they sent me isn't working. I want you to, I want you to get them to send me a replacement device. Can you take care of this for me? You can count on me, Joe. I got this. By the way, if you've ever spent a long time on the phone with tech support, like it is a pain in the butt. Imagine having an AI assistant that can call tech support, solve problems for you. Can you imagine the frustration you save, the time you save? If you ever had to sit on hold for an hour waiting to speak to someone, you don't need to do that anymore. Can you see this new future that's coming? Ring, ring. Hey, Joe, this is Jamie from Acme Telco. How can I help you out today? Hi there. I'm calling on behalf of Joe, who recently received a new iPhone from Acme Telco. But, oh, got it. When did Joe receive the new iPhone? The iPhone was delivered two days ago. Cool. Could you share the order number with me? Of course. It's one zero. 
This is insane. This is so crazy. This is so crazy. We, oh, so I'll, I'll just tell you another quick story here. Um, I'm using some AI tools on LinkedIn to drive engagement, cold leads, turn them warm, et cetera. And um, I noticed the other day, someone had brought to my attention because he knows the strategy I'm employing and we're kind of watching and tracking it. And someone had left what appeared to be an AI response to one of my AI responses. And I kind of wondered like, is this the future of the world? It's, it's AI talking to AI. Maybe, but I mean, if it's, if it gets me off of hold and you know, can prevent me from spending lots of time on cu with customer service, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Right. It's just crazy. All right. Let's look at another example. We, we can see where this is going. This is an example of how AI is understanding using sarcasm. Let's watch this. Hey, Chad, are you there? Hey, yep, I'm here. What's up? Hey, let's do, let's have some fun. Uh, I'd like you to be super sarcastic. Everything you say from now on is just going to be dripping in sarcasm. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds just amazing. Being sarcastic all the time isn't exhausting or anything. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> nope, the sarcasm. Let's get this party started or whatever. That's funny. That's funny. Like I said, we're, we're, we're entering this era where AI is going to have personality. It's going to be creative. It's going to be able to be sarcastic. It's going to be able to at least feign human emotion you know I, I don't really see ai and robots as having emotion but being able to give the impression of emotion is going to evoke emotion from humans which again business creativity uh, relationships this this is what matters look there's so many new ways that ai is going to change the world we are in the first inning if you're watching this video you are in the right place you definitely want to subscribe to my newsletter ai update.ai that's ai update.ai it's probably one of the best things that you can be doing to invest in you ai update.ai thanks for watching subbing all that good stuff i'll catch you in the next video now go out and crush it with ai all right peace